Welcome back, my fellow mobile gamers of YouTube. My name is Nimble Thor, and this game, well, this is Lumia Saga, a 3D open world MMORPG that released towards the tail end of 2019. And today, we will be checking out this game. I will let you all know what I like and what I dislike about the game, and we'll go through its core gameplay features, its monetization, its business practices, and then, as always, we'll end off the video with an interesting mobile gaming news of the day. So hang in there, and let's dive in with the classes system, because I think that's the most important thing to talk about in any MMORPG in the beginning, you have to pick a class and in this game by the way the classes are not gender locked so I'm, I was really happy to see that that's the case in most mobile MMORPGs they're typically gender locked but not in this game so we can pick between a guardian which is a close combat DPS character which is what I'm playing as right now and then a cleric a ranger a mage and then a knight class. You don't actually have to think too much about which class you pick in the beginning of the game because between level 30 and level 50, you can actually switch your class for absolutely zero cost. So we can do that for free. If you pick a wrong class, don't create a new character. That would just be a waste of time. Just go up to level 30 and then you can always change it for free. So this game's unique selling point though is its loot system. You see, we don't have normal weapons and armor if we go in here to our equipment. Instead, we can combine our own equipment and weapons using what this game calls cores. And we drop these cores from creatures and we get them as quest rewards. And we can then choose where to equip them on our weapon or any other of our equipment slots. Let me just give you guys an example. So for example, our weapon up here. We have three different equipment slots on our weapon, and depending on where we place our cores, that will change the look of the weapon, but it will also change the core attributes of the weapon. So this is a way to customize our look in this game, which is really cool. I've never seen that before. That's a really neat idea. And then secondly, it's a way to really min-max our character. You want to go for more attack than HP? Well, you can do that. You just have to equip a core that has those attributes that you're looking for. So for example, right now, we have these uh, different uh, cores that you can see here in the bottom of the screen. Now, I do think we have the best equipment on us already, but let me just try and show you guys how this looks. So let's equip this one. And there you go, the shield changed, right? And if we, for example, go up here to Gurgle's weapon and equip something else, let's say this one, for example, Formless Weapon, let's equip that. And there you go, as you can see, the look of the weapon changed. I think we already had the best stuff equipped already, actually, but you guys hopefully get the idea of this system, and I quite like this system. So another thing we can do is we can level up each weapon slot or each equipment slot and we can switch out any loot and we'll then still have the same advantages. So for example, the weapon slot is now plus 25. It does not matter which cause we add to our weapon, it will always be plus 25. So it will always have that, how much is this? I think a plus 154 attack strength. And that's really cool. So we can simply enhance these using silver, which is the normal in-game currency that we earn for free. And then some of these good enhancement stones, which we can get from, from quests, we can get them from dungeons, we can get them in many different ways throughout the game. And we actually want to go in here and make sure we upgrade this stuff as often as we can, because this adds a lot of really great attributes to our character, such as more physical defense, more magical defense, more life, more attack strength, and so on. And it's very quick to do. But this is a neat system because it means that we don't have to level this up all over again whenever we equip new equipment. I actually think it's something that's very unique to Lumia Saga. I've played lots of MMORPGs both on mobile and on PC and I don't think I've seen a system like this before and it also makes us feel as if we're constantly progressing from start till the end of the game. Another unique thing about this game is its approach to skills and classes because although we picked uh, the Guardian class for example when we first started playing there are multiple subclasses that we can actually switch between at any point in time which changes our skills and once again it changes our core stats. So let's go have a look at that right now. We simply tap this little button to open the menu here and we can go into the skills system. So right now we are a novice guardian but we could switch back to the novice a judge, I guess that's how it's pronounced. Uh, I know you guys call me out when I butcher these names, but uh, I think that's how it's pronounced. And as you guys can see, now we have a whole new set of skills, and it also changes our attributes somewhat, because this, uh, this a judge here has max HP, you guys can see that over here on the left side, max HP plus 32%, attack plus 65%, physical defense 32%, and magical defense 32%. Whereas the Guardian has max HP 65%, so it has quite a lot more HP, but it only has plus 13% in attack, whereas the judge 
has plus 65% in attack. Now, the reason I figured this was worth highlighting is that it actually allows each class to have a subclass mostly focused on playing solo with high DPS, which would in our case be the novice at judge, and then another subclass that is more focused on team play with party buffs and, and healing abilities, which in this case is the novice guardian because if we switch back here you guys can see that we for example have light of divine realm which if we look at its description for example restores 25 energy to the whole party every two seconds and it also heals five teammates in the circle for 10 percent attack plus 60 hp every two seconds and so on and so on and we have more of these types of, of abilities that can help us survive and can help us heal our teammates. So this is obviously incredibly useful when you're in a dungeon with other players or you're doing some sort of team play activity with your guild, for example. I also believe it's worth noticing how many ways through which we can actually improve the strength of our character in this game, apart from the obvious ones like, you know, killing monsters, leveling up and leveling up our skills and equipping new gear. We've also got something hidden over here. It's somewhat hidden by tapping this button called function and then manual. And then we can go in here to adventurous skills and in here we can choose certain stats to increase so for example we could increase our hp we could increase our dodge we could increase what could we increase here our magic defense and that's even gonna unlock some other ones like increase our hit increase our critical and so on and so on so for example right now we have 40 of these upgrading stones and i say we go for well since i'm playing as a character with lots of hp already i actually want to go for some more attack so we can upgrade this up to 50 times, although we don't have that many stones just yet. But, you know, over time, as you guys can see, this attribute in itself can be upgraded 50 times. And the same goes for the one that increases HP and the one that increases magic defense and the one that increases physical defense. So this is another thing you have to be aware of. Go in here. I, I didn't notice this at first, so be sure to go in here and upgrade that stuff. And also, by the way, the way to get more of these uh, badges or these gems that we use to upgrade these uh, attributes is whenever you see a new monster, you have to go in here to your monster collection book and click on them. And that gives you some more warriors badges, which is what we need to upgrade our warrior. And so remember to do this. As you guys can probably see, I actually haven't done this in a while. So there's actually lots of points to collect here. And that will, of course, now allow us to go back here. And now we have 35 extra of these badges, which then allows me to upgrade our attack a bit more and our HP a bit more. But it doesn't stop here, though. We can also go into our backpack and then we can go down here to our outfit section, where, for example, right now we're wearing this bunny hood. And I'm not just doing that for fun and giggles. I actually like you know, how my character looks without this bunny outfit on. But this one adds 2,400 in HP, though. And the bunny coat over here adds 80 in attack power. So, of course, I'm going to equip it. Oh, I, I accidentally clicked unequip there. But, of course, I'm equipping that, right? Because that gives us more attributes. However, it doesn't stop here, though. We have even more ways to increase our attribute points. And this one is another feature that is just almost hidden. Uh, you have to go in under your backpack and then you can click on... Up here to get to your attribute screen and then you can change your title and your title can increase your attack or your life for example so again yet another way by the way this uh, attribute screen is really really nice we can see all of our stats in just one screen here and i would say without this screen it would probably be almost impossible to calculate your total defense your total attack and, and so on because of the many different systems through which we grow stronger in this game now just in case it wasn't obvious by now this game lumia saga is very much an auto combat and an auto questing game we can simply tap the quest and right now we're fighting automatically we can of course play manually but there's really no reason to do so as the auto play features work really well so for some this is probably going to be a huge disappointment but for others this is going to be the reason to play this game and i guess there might also be some people like myself out there i don't really think that this auto play matters as much as how great the rest of the game is. I'm okay with a bit of auto gameplay, a bit of auto questing, if the rest of the game is still fun. I just see the game as more of an incredibly elaborate idle game at that point, which can also be really enjoyable. So it's less of an open world, uh, difficult MMORPG, and more of an idle game with lots of features and you know awesome 3D combat. And Lumia Saga is really elaborate, by the way. There are so many systems, dare I say, maybe too many systems? At least it feels like we're constantly getting introduced to new things, even after playing this game for hours already. Look at this boss, by the way. This boss battle here. I think we'll be able to complete this one completely on auto mode. Let's do that as a challenge and, uh, you know, just to show you guys how good this auto system actually is. And yes, we completed it already. There's a bit of uh, CGI here. We can skip that. And as you can see, we actually completed this entire little dungeon very, very easily with just the auto gameplay mode. I am also rather impressed by the fact that this game has English 
his voiceovers at least for some quests and some NPCs. That's pretty impressive. Uh, it's not always without a bit of cringe, but it's here, and I didn't expect that from an MMORPG that I had frankly never heard of before. Lumia Saga, to me at least, just came out of the blue. I, I don't know if it's a game that you guys had heard of before you, you came to watch this video. Now, interestingly, there are many so-called life skills as well, and, you know, talking about the features of this game, this is just yet another one. I like the idea of these life skills, as it feels almost like RuneScape. So, for example, we can be a botanist, we can be an alchemist, we can be an minerologist. We can also become a fishing child or we can become a chef. And some of these are gonna unlock later on and some of them have already been unlocked. So what we can do here as a botanist, for example, is to actually go collect resources. And this can be automated, by the way. So we don't have to do this manually if we don't want to, such as, for example, the, let's say the rock vines. I can click this auto button. And right now our character is gonna run automatically to some stones. It's gonna start collecting them. And then we can use these to craft, for example, potions. And we can craft different types of things that is gonna make us stronger or allow us a better survivability. So, for example, if we want to go uh, create some potions, we would go in here to the alchemist section and we would click start alchemy. And here you can see that we just need some bellflowers. That's all we need to create this level 25 revival potion that's going to restore 2500 HP with a 30 second cooldown. So we can start synthesizing and you can do this anywhere in the world, which is kind of cool. So we don't have to walk back to town, for example, walk back to a certain NPC. We can do this anywhere we are. And this alchemy can also be used to craft new cores, by the way. So basically what makes our weapon stronger. We do need some more, what is this, rough nuclear powder, though, to uh, be able to craft uh, this formless accessory. And we also need some accessory refinement stones. But it's a feature that's there. And later on in this game, we'll probably end up crafting quite a few of these, maybe to use, maybe to sell uh, on the auction house, for example. Now, some of you might be wondering, hey, Nimble Thor, aren't you going to talk about the combat system? And frankly... I think I'm just gonna skip most of it, because this game focuses on auto gameplay. You won't really be fighting manually, there's just no reason to do so. And it's not even that fun, even if you want to do so, so I guess that's what I can say about the combat system. I would just, I would just focus on the auto gameplay. This, right now, what you're looking at is auto gameplay, and... You know, we're doing just fine just with this auto system. This might differ a bit from class to class. So some classes might have a harder time surviving and you might need more potions. But if you go this route that I did, then, you know, you're going to have a pretty easy time, honestly. So that's my thoughts on the combat system. That's pretty much all I'm going to say. I mean, we do have mana and yes, some skills cost mana and, you know, other skills can restore mana whenever we attack. That's how that works. So, yeah, I guess it is somewhat unique that we don't have mana potions in this game and instead mana is restored by using normal attacks or certain abilities that might uh, recover mana faster but again even if we did have mana potions they would have probably just been automated as well and that might sound like a bad thing but as I touched upon already I actually don't think the the auto system in this game is that bad I just see this game as more of an uh, more of an idle game than a normal action-packed MMORPG now, once you get into Lumia Saga, you'll probably feel what I felt as well, which is that we're constantly doing either some quest, which often includes killing certain monsters, or we're heading into events, which can be a small dungeon, for example, that provides some sort of meaningful reward. And there's nothing wrong with this type of gameplay. I am, to some extent, kind of enjoying it, but I am missing some sort of greater focus on just having me explore the world, right? This world is actually pretty well designed, but I never have any incentive to go explore it, which I think is really a shame, honestly. We gain, in my opinion, far too much XP from just completing quests and far too little from just exploring the world and grinding normal monsters. At the end of the day, though, this does come down to just personal preference, I guess. Some people really like a game like World of Warcraft, for example, where you have a very linear quest line that you have to follow, and then eventually you're at max level. And then there's the other type of category of gamer that I fall into, where I prefer the more sandbox-like and open-world MMORPGs, like, for example, RuneScape. And look at this, by the way. Now we we have a tiny bit of extra tutorial, even after I would say probably between five to ten hours of gameplay. <laughs> it's, it's just insane. I mean, how can there be so many systems in this game? Now, as for how this game monetizes, Lumia actually has done something quite interesting here. Because while we can definitely buy additional equipment upgrade stones in the store, as well as other things that increases our daily rewards, for example, that is mostly it. That's mostly what it is. 
things that make us level up faster. So this definitely does make the game pay to progress faster, but the game has very few things for sale that can't also be reasonably grinded through normal gameplay. And maybe best of all, there is this section of the store where we can buy the most essential things for gold. And the cool thing about gold is that we actually have an option of earning that for free without spending real life money by simply selling things like resources we've harvested, for example, to other players in the auction house. So, for example, we could choose to go in here to trading and we can go over here, consign for sale. And let's, for example, pick some of these Lumos flowers. We can put them on the shelves and then we simply wait and we would potentially earn 300 gold and we could go over here to the store, we could go into the gold section and, you know, 300 gold isn't a lot of gold, but I also didn't collect that many resources. So if you really grinded resources, you could sell them to other players on the auction house, you'd be earning gold and you could spend that in here to buy well, you know, at least many of the same things that you can also buy for premium currency. And that's a really cool feature. I've seen similar systems in other games on mobile, like for example, Lapless Mobile, but it's still something I didn't expect to see as it's only found in, I would say, relatively few games even on mobile. At the end of the day, this doesn't really take away from the fact that we can definitely pay for progress faster, but, I mean, you gotta look at the landscape, right? Most mobile MMORPGs of this kind are very heavily pay to win or pay for progress faster, and it seems to me, at least so far, without having played the end game just yet, that this game is within the realm of those, I'd say, maybe 5 to 10 mobile MMORPGs that are somewhat lightly monetized, at least in comparison to other mobile MMORPGs. So the only thing I'm really missing here now is a bigger focus on PvP, although that might of course change as I get closer to the highest level and the end game. And then secondly, a larger focus on team play and team dungeons. And it's not like there isn't any team play dungeons, by the way, because there are team play dungeons, but the game just hasn't really focused on their importance, at least not yet for me. So hopefully that changes at the end game, because that is basically Lumia Saga. Now, I didn't get to cover everything about this game because it's such a huge game, but I hope this video gave you guys a good overview of what to expect from the game. And then if you wanna check it out for yourselves, you can find the download links in the description box down below this video. As I said before, I still personally prefer the more open world sandbox MMORPGs, like for example, RuneScape, which is also available on mobile. I prefer that over these theme park MMORPGs where we follow a quest line to level up. But I will admit though, that this game's many features and its incredible depth because of these features and systems has really got me quite intrigued. And I could actually see myself continuing playing this game if I find the time to do so. So for me, this is definitely a keeper. I will keep it installed. And you know, if some of you guys play the game, maybe we can even end up playing together in this game. Those were my thoughts on Lumia Saga though. So let me know what you think. Would you play it? Have you played it? Let's discuss all that good stuff in the comment section down below this video. And now let's move on to the mobile gaming news of the day, which is that Game Club, the subscription service for premium mobile games that launched on iOS last year with over 100 games available, is now set to launch on Android as well. So good news for all the Android guys out there. It will arrive in March 2020 and it'll cost $5 per month, just like on iOS. And the unique thing about Game Club is that all of the games on the service are 100% exclusive to the service. So the idea for Game Club was basically to revive mobile games, old mobile games that have been abandoned by its developers. So if you used to play a premium mobile game years ago that just isn't available anymore because the developers didn't earn enough money to support it, there is a small chance that it's already available on Game Club or if it isn't yet available, maybe the Game Club team will be able to bring the game back to life. And this also goes if you played something on Android uh, that isn't available on iOS, or you played something on iOS that isn't available on Android, maybe Game Club can help fix that. So I actually think this is one of the more interesting subscription services, definitely more interesting than, than Apple's own subscription service and Google's uh, own subscription service. So if some of you guys haven't heard of it yet, maybe now's the time to go check it out. I know a lot of you guys like premium games as well. So let me know what you think about Game Club. So you know what? I think we're gonna end it off on that note. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new around here, but you want more mobile gaming goodness. I know this video ended up becoming quite long. Most of my videos are a bit shorter, I promise. So go check out some of the other videos on the channel if you haven't already. But most importantly, until next time, just keep gaming, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys around.